Oliver, like I said, report tomorrow, kind of marking time today. You can tell by the change on day on most of those things. Not a lot's happening, but maybe you've got some light you can shut on what you think is going to be happening tomorrow or what your customers have been telling you or anything you'd like. The floor is yours. Well, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Everyone's just kind of uh, anticipating tomorrow's USDA report, especially in that corn market where we've just kind of been in the chop, chop, chop mode or consolidatory mode where we're waiting for new news to give us new direction. The good news is that we have halted the recent trend of lower highs and lower lows here over the last couple of weeks, which has neutralized the bearish technicals. And now we're kind of building a little bit of a wedge, uh, hoping for that next leg one way or the other. Tomorrow's USDA report could be the catalyst to give the market the nudge that we're kind of all hoping for. Now, soybeans is a little bit different of a story. We continue to be in the downtrend, lower highs, lower lows. And you had mentioned yields coming in a little bit better than expected through much of the Midwest. The other thing that uh, we've been keeping a close eye on recently is the lack of flash sales. China was in holiday much of last week. They were back in the back half of the week, and we were kind of anticipating them to be in the market with some flash sales. We didn't see that. We didn't see that this morning, and that's kept the lid here on things. 12.30, 12.33 was last week's lows. Those are kind of must-hold areas uh, into tomorrow's report and after the report. A break and close blow there. There's not a lot of support until you get to that psychologically significant $12 handle, but really the, the significant pocket doesn't come in until the 1180s. So tomorrow's going to be a big one. The bulls want to defend last week's lows uh, to, to try to muster up some upward momentum here in the near future. Yeah, I mean, it's going to have to come from the demand side, right? And, you know, as far as those bigger yields, it's funny how all summer long the West was dry and the, and the East was fine. And so we all thought that uh, how bad is the bad versus how good is the good. But it's interesting that some of these yields actually in the West are coming in better than expected for those beans and maybe even not as as well as expected in the east so it'll be interesting to see in aggregate what we finally get but also oliver i think that there's a little bit of a well a black cloud on beans when it comes to next year i mean we've seen some folks put out some sale recommendations already because of what the acreage switch might be because of energy input prices so that's yeah. another that's another thing go ahead you might yeah, ab absolutely. The input uh, prices for corn going through the uh, roof and obviously kind of getting some people anticipating some early acreage shifts. Obviously, a lot can change uh, between here and next spring, but certainly something that's gotten a lot of people's attention recently. Right. That's what I call tavern talk, right?